Go ahead and grab the paperwork and just find a seat. All right, so welcome to our uh, second informational meeting for the 2013-14 testing process. This process will allow us to form a hiring list that will go live about June of next year. And we will carry that list for a minimum of two, possibly up to three years if the list is still, still solvent after three years. On the current list now, we had about 55 on the current list that's uh, still going until next June. And we've hired over 20 off of it, I believe. So this next list will be a good one to get on. Uh, we have quite a few people looking to retire next year, too. Um, our Station 8, if anybody's familiar out with Chimney, is looking to go from volunteer to career. Um, we're hoping to build it here hopefully pretty soon, um, within the year, and then staffing hopefully within a year, year from that. Um, there's other programs and things we'd like to go live with, should money and stuff like that come to fruition, like another truck company, things of that nature. So the next couple tests are gonna be great tests, great lists to get on, as far as the number of people that we're bringing on, okay? Uh, so we already went through the presenters, Captain Andy V, who's is the process lead, and Captain Dave Kellen, who's got the written in the CPAT. And again, my name is uh, Spencer Rice, I'm the lead of the recruitment committee. Uh, just kind of the agenda, we're already part way through that. We're gonna go through the report, uh, requirements to apply, the process which uh, these two gentlemen will have, handle the written national testing network, who's the online tester that we're utilizing this time. Um, interviews we'll talk about, CPAP we'll talk about. All right, so for your requirements, right now, we have changed it to you. You just have to be 18 years of age or older, valid driver and license, High school diploma or GED. You must have a valid EMT card by the time that Chiefs interview rolls around, that first Chiefs interview, which is about June ish. So if you haven't got into EMT, you still have next semester to get in and get your EMT, and you should be done with that semester by the time that Chiefs interview rolls around. For those of you that are out of state, if you have your national registry, anything like that, that'll suffice. What you do is we end up doing the reciprocity uh, through the state and you get your Colorado. Uh, if you have something to write with, take it out right now because here's the um, kind of the big change we have. And we'll talk about it when we're on that specific section. But the CPAT, in your handout there is this a CPAT um, successful uh, certificate that you pass the CPAT is due at that chief's interview. Those of you that have been on the written test on NTN and seen some of the stuff we had, we also had that. We have changed it and it is now you have to have your CPAC card by that first interview, which is going to be March 10th through the 14th that week. Uh, for those of you here locally, that's the week before Cooter School District goes on uh, spring break. So you have you have that window to get it done, and uh, Captain Kellen will talk about doing that with Ames and any other CPAC places. Also. You gotta take into account Ames is a community college and they close for Christmas break, so we'll talk about that. So that's the big change that we have. Just mark that down. Still gives you plenty of time. Still gives you enough time to get in shape if you don't think you're in shape for that test. All right? Um, I will turn it over to Dave for the application process and Andy. Our application process began uh, September 16th. Right. And, so, and it's going to run until December 31st, so it's an application and testing process in one. You apply with National Testing Network. We have the hyperlink on our website that will take you to National Testing Network, or you can go directly to that website. Uh, it is your responsibility at that point to follow the directions that are on there. It will walk you through. You know, we've had a, we've had a couple of things because other departments. Uh, started the test before we did, and our our department didn't come up on the list. And, and we'll kind of walk you through. We still have those. Uh, we'll we'll kind of give you an idea here. One of the things that we've uh, had a problem with is if you are signed up to take your test, you 
must sign up for any department that you want to work for before you take your test. After you take the test, the only ones you will be eligible to take will be new departments that come online after that. So that there has been some confusion on that and we, we hopefully have addressed all of that. So when you get to the website for the NTN, it'll walk you through and throughout the, the uh, application process, there's gonna be a number of directions and they're gonna tell you, it's, it's gonna tell you up to four times Make sure that you have all of the departments that you want to apply for. So when you go to the uh, website and you're signing up, you know it's going to ask you to go through and uh, they'll take a credit card on the website like that. You will pay for your test. If you've already taken the test and you had put your name on, which you won't be allowed to do that now because we are already up. But you can say, uh, one that's new, say if this one just popped up and you're interested in going there as well, you can actually then go back on that website, pay the $7 and go to that department and have your score sent to that department, all right? So any of these that are highlighted, you can see all of the departments that use NTN and they go through this and they use it for different amounts of time. Some use it for two to three months, some use it for six months. Some departments continually test as they go through. And some of these are, are uh, actually different uh, part-time firefighters or, or volunteer firefighters. They use the same process. So any of these that come up that say new, if you've already have a test score, you can check and see if they're new enough that you can add. But if they, if they were there, this new thing comes on, it stays on that department for 30 days. That, that red flag stays up there for 30 days. So if you've taken your test and that flag wasn't there or that department wasn't highlighted, when they come back up then, you'll be allowed to do that. So if there's any departments, and we can go down to Colorado, that you want to test for, then they're already on here. So you need to, if, you, if you're going to test for any of those, make sure that you meet the requirements for each department and make sure that you put them as the one of the ones that you want to test for. And it's going to ask you over and over, the one thing that we've learned is it's very thorough, they've gone through this, and you know, we've had people make mistakes, and you know, bottom line is that's part of the testing process, is what it comes down to. It's, it's got great directions through here, they don't make any mistakes, they've, they've done pretty well at uh, running people through this process. So what you would do is you would click on the Food and Fire Authority, and it would do that. And when you get, you can sign up for any of these. If this is your, your first time, you can sign up for every department that's on here that you meet the requirements of. And what you really have to do is look through each one and make sure that they're not requiring education or, or something that you don't have. Because if you don't meet the requirements, that will also show uh, on your application process, and you really don't want that on your process. So you would pick the, the Food or Fire Authority and whoever else, I mean, if you're testing for the Arvada Volunteer Reserve, really, whatever, then you would hit the continue, and it asks you right here, have you added all the departments that you want to apply for? So it, it asks you right there, and it goes through it, and if you're only applying for one, or if you're applying for 100, you say, that's all I want, that's all that I need and then you go to the next and it says do you qualify here's the job information for the food or fire authority and you go through this you need everything in here it's like yeah i need the requirements you know we, we dropped our 60 credit hours part of our 60 credit hour requirement was because of logistics for us um, we weren't able to take the number that we wanted we we were always told to take more people into a process and it kind of affected our process. Well, with this, we're not worried about that. We're gonna get the number of people that we can effectively handle throughout the process, and this is just a written test. So you go through here, it's gonna go, and I think at the bottom or somewhere here, it's gonna say, I'm good, and uh, you just, I'm qualified, and you can do it. And then it goes, where would you like to test? 
Here's our testing centers in Colorado that are active right now. The one thing you have to do is they don't test every day, you know, of, of every week. You get online, you have to look and see what days they are testing. And then sign up for a test and then be there on the day that you sign up. And the same with the Arvada. What, uh, the Arvada is a testing center for the Arvada Fire Department. They have their own fire. They're looking for a reserve volunteer. When they're finished, they will close that testing center. So before you sign up for there, make sure that those test days are available. With Ames Community College, they are going to be closed for Christmas break, December 23rd through January 2nd or 3rd. So if you're going to take the test at Ames, make sure that you're signed up before the 23rd, before they close. And they'll have a list of days when you go there to sign up. They'll have a list of days and times. Uh, there are a couple of days where they'll, they'll do two tests during the day. And they're trying to accommodate all of the, uh, the tests that are coming in. Uh, NTN is actually signing a contract with Aurora Community College as we speak. It's not online yet, but if it does come online, that will give you an opportunity. The one thing I'll tell you is don't keep putting it off. You know, try and get yourself ready for it because, you know, we found that things happen and everybody's signing up late and then there's no availability for you and then you can't do it. Then you're going to have to go somewhere else. But you can go to any, if you look on here, you can go to any of these testing centers. You can click on Arizona. And there's an Arizona testing center. And it's highlighted. It's not grayed out like this one. That means that it is taking tests. And you can see that it says they do uh, CPAT tests, public safety tests. So they do all of that. So, you know, worst comes to worst. And, and you don't get on the Ames or the Arvada, which that would only be your fault if you don't get on those. And you could, could travel to the closest state and, uh, and try to get on that. It's the fire team test. You know, the one thing that all of us will tell you is the written test, it doesn't matter what written test, we, we can put, you know, how to best take care of cats and dogs. It's a written test to get people to our hiring process. And our process really starts with the interviews. You know, obviously, we have to have a way to, that we can't test everybody, so we use a written test. So this is a written test that we've chosen to go to. It's beneficial for us to use it. Uh, financially, it's beneficial for us uh, logistically to use this test. So this is the test we've chosen to use. Uh, this will probably be the standard. If you, if you take any firefighter tests within the next couple of years, uh, you'll start to see this test. Uh, it's already used, but it's not used in the, uh, in the online form. So you'll start to see this test be used uh, by departments in the city. Anything, any other questions on here? And, and again, as you click this and go through it, it walks you through. It says that at this point, you'll need to give a credit card to pay your $40. So it's going to be the applicant's responsibility to pay for, for the written test at that time. And you'll see it. They'll ask you the credit card and go through that uh, process. Any questions on, on that? Will that testing center in Colorado Springs become available before the end of the test process? I have no idea. There, as far as I know, uh, if it's not highlighted, I wouldn't count. You know, so look at the ones that are on there, uh, pick it, and then you can go on there. I know that Ames, just being out, out at Ames and stuff, they are they're putting tests in constantly. You know, they're looking at the. Uh, how much it's needed, and they, they add tests constantly in there. They do the same thing with the CPAP over there. Right now. Any other questions? I don't know what that red highlight is, saying special notice, no CPAP, but Ames is doing a CPAP. Well, they don't do CPAP through National Testing Network. Right, but don't, don't, yeah, the, when so you get yeah, there, don't think you can't go to AMG, you have to call AMG separately. Yeah, and, and yeah, we can talk about that. Ames does do a CPAP, but it's not through. National Testing Network offers a CPAT program. Uh, Ames signed up for NTN for the written test, but not for the CPAT. And you can see, like, uh, on the last one where it said they offer a, a PAT test, which is a police uh, ability test. And 
other tests. So some of them are only police or uh, security guard, or not security, uh, prison guard kind of uh, testing. But if we're going to have questions, let's go up to the mic just so we can capture that. Um, I just wanted to say with the AIMS, with the CPAT, they have, I think, four testing dates coming up in the next three months. So I know one's on, like, December 4th, one's January, or November 4th, and one's uh, December, November 21st. So, uh, and then another, there's another one earlier this month, so. Yeah, they just added a December one as well, so. Yeah. Yeah, they, they've got a the CPAT one, and we were going to talk about that a little bit later. All right, I just wanted to comment. Yeah, so the, the written test. This is what you're going to have to do for the written test. It's not going to be the big, anybody that's taken our test before in the big auditorium where we have a thousand people, it's going to be online or it's going to be uh, at the college, yeah. And it's going to be a video test. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions on the written part of it? it, it uh, well, we've had several questions and, and we think we have. Uh, alleviated any of the problems that we've had. You know, there was some confusion, really jumped on real quick, and there was people that wanted to take both tests, and they didn't know if they should sign up for really or both. Uh, those, those matters are pretty much done. So any of your testing issues that you have, don't call PFA, go through National Testing Network. If you don't get satisfaction, we, we've had people call us. So. One of the things that uh, that we offer is if there is a financial hardship, you can apply at PFA, and we will consider and uh, consider paying the uh, the fee for the written test, and that'll be on a case by case basis. Yeah, so things you should plan on the rent is forty dollars, and none of that money comes to PFA. That goes to that company to operate it all. So don't think we're uh, profiting off of this by any means or not. It's $40 for the first time to take the written, and like Dave said, you go back and add departments at $7 per department. The CPAT, I believe, is $100 or $110. And that, also that goes to Ames. You'll get a certificate that's good for one year. We'll talk about it later. If you make the list, and our list is two to three years, it's up to you to make sure those things stay current. You know, you need to make sure you're staying in shape, you can do the job, things of that nature. So, you know, we've had people that thrilled to death, they got hired in year three, but they took that CPAT three times, and it, you know, throughout their years, it cost them $300, so, all right. Um, and then with the actual written test, like Dave said, it's, it's computer-based, you'll be in a class of 50 seats? Yeah, I, I'm not sure, and, and they have the ability to expand it out as they get more. But you'll have your own computer station in it, goes in front of everybody at the same time when you're taking that test. Um, you'll see there on NTN for $22.95, you can take two practice tests with them. Kind of give you a feel for how the test goes, the questions they're asking, um, and they give you feedback on how you answer on that practice test. You know, this answer was right, this answer was wrong, here's why. Every answer, there's four, there's, there's four possible answers to each question. In each one, there's a best answer, which gets like the full point, there's the worst answer gets, I think, a quarter point. Everything gets a little bit of a point, and then they compile that together. I highly suggest you take those practiced exams just to kind of get a feel for it, to see what they're going for, to see what they're asking, and get kind of that feedback. Now, you get two shots at that practice test, but it's the same test, so your second one should be 100%. Um, the test is divided into the four areas general math and English, mechanical and people skills. Math and English have to have a passing grade. And I believe it's 70%. So you have to have a passing percent. Uh, and then what they do is they take a cumulative score of all four of those areas. But math and English are a must pass. That, that, those are pass based areas. You, the score is good for a year. If you make our list, you won't have to take that written test again. If you make the final 50 people on our list, you won't have to take that test again. Um, you can take the test at six months. It'll cost you another $40. Uh, 
to try to get a better score. They have told us that historically, that people don't move much either way taking this test. Three hour time limit, but everybody's at the same, you know, everybody's at the same video. So you have to remember that if you don't answer a question, you don't go back to answer it. So it goes through the, the testing process and it gives you 20 seconds, 25 seconds for each question. So as you're going in there, you need to, to follow that question and be able to answer it. It doesn't go back. It won't give you an opportunity to go back. So yeah, a couple of things to remember is the 23rd of December, even though our process doesn't uh, end until the 31st, Ames Community College is closed the 23rd through January 2nd. So you need to be signed up and uh, gone for that. We just heard today that, uh, you know, really extended theirs seven days. And somebody had signed, they extended it to the seventh and they had people that went in and signed up to take the test on the ninth. And then called Greeley and said, uh, hey, is that gonna be good for us to do? And, you know, we try our very best to accommodate every person that we can. We want you all to succeed in this, but bottom line is, we have to follow uh, the procedures and the rules that we have kind of set. There's um, an NTN application that you will fill out from everyone that we've talked to that's filled it out. You need to allow yourself about three hours to fill out that application. It is uh, very, very in depth. So yeah, that's the personal history questionnaire, and you'll see it. Every person has to fill that. You don't have to have it done by the time you take the test but you have to have it done before December 31st. And you're able to go on your, once you sign up on NTN, you sign your username, password, that's your site to go in on. So you can go in and do 10 minutes, 20 days, and, and get it done, you know, whatever. But it takes about, we, we've heard anywhere three to four hours. There, there's a lot of personal information, there's financial information on there. There is a purpose for all of it. We, we don't use any of the uh, any of the information for anything. You know, if there's questions, like I say, financial and personal information. Fill it out to the best of your ability and, and be honest in your, uh, in your answers. Um, so then the first two weeks of January, we will be reviewing the scores, the top 300, give or take where that belt curve kind of lies, it may be 275, 325, they will be informed that they will be moving on in the process, which the next step would be the uh, first, first um, oral interviews in March. All right, on uh, Friday, or I think the 31st at five o'clock, that's when we start getting all our applications. They will have pretty much all of it lined up and then they'll just ship it to us and we'll be able to tell where our cutoff will be on the scores. So from there, like Park Fire Horizon City, we'll take the top 275 and 325. And that's only because of the uh, interviews. That's about all we can handle in a week. Right? So that's why that number is like that. We'll take ties and all that, but if we can do more, if some people can't make it, they let us know. We'll have uh, a few extra to uh, choose from. So anywhere from three to three fifty, we kind of keep on tabs. So once that closes, we'll get all the information. We'll send you a letter telling you that uh, we will be having any news on this date. This is your time to come in. All right. And then uh, we will expect a little, some information back whether you're going to be there or not. Okay, so again, it's coming to you to pay attention, read the instructions, and make sure you let us know if you're going to be there. Or, in some cases, uh, people have to change times and days because of other reasons. But you got to let us know. All right. So, in the first uh, round of interviews, like it says there, you'll have. Uh, 
panel of firefighters, you'll have captains, uh, driver operators, firefighters, male, female, just a wide variety of uh, bottom, not so bottom, but uh, of firefighters on the department. These are all firefighters that most of them have been in your place right now. So they've come to these meetings and now they are on the other side. So like they were talking about in the video, you are part of PFA once you get hired. You will be asked and serve to do whatever you feel like doing as tickles your interest. Thank you. So you just be aware of that. The first round of questions will be uh, 20 minutes, be five questions. It's, this is where we ask general questions about you. Alright, who you are. We want to know everything we can about you in 20 minutes. Doesn't seem like a long time, but you know that's what you got to work. With. Okay, so the biggest thing on this one is listen to the question. All right, don't have free answers. Just listen to the question, and you'll be fine. Okay, the others are going to be a lot of stress involved, but just try to relax. We're not going to put you on a spot. It's just we're just here to ask questions. <coughs> Ask them truth, uh, answer them truthfully, honestly, and you can get through it without too much trouble. All right. Uh, the second round will take the top 55, 65, including ties, and now we'll go to the next round of interviews, the second round of interviews. On that first round of interviews, let me talk, go back. You need to have that's where you need to have your uh, CPAC. Yeah, make, make sure to bring that, put that in a note or stars, whatever. If you don't bring it to that interview, yeah. So, and this will all be in the letter that we send you. Okay. So in that letter, you'll if you have an ID, you see that in the letter, I believe. So, and all that's in the letter. So, pay attention. To the Second round of interviews will be uh, has to come at a certain time again. And that'll be in uh, April, starting on the 21st. And in that one, you will have a five-minute resume, okay, or a oral resume. So you'll tell us what you feel is important. Maybe that's about you, what we want. All right? So it'll be all about you that first five minutes, and then we'll be asking you another set of questions. All right? Again. Listen to the question. All right. Just don't put anything into it. Just listen to the question and answer it truthfully, and you'll get caught. All right. So just, I can't stress that enough. Listen to the question. All right. And then from there, that's where we'll take uh, we'll rank one through fifty or sixty, whatever we have, and then those people. Whatever positions come up or open up, we'll usually have two people for each position to interview with the chief. So if we have three positions, could be 10, 12, 15 people. It just depends on what the chiefs decide. And that's where your EMT will be required. Yes. And you will, again, give a letter that explains all that and we can all that the instructions. Okay? And now, like, uh, Firefighter Rice was saying that this is good for two possible teenagers. You need to maintain CPAP, EMT, all that. All right? Questions? So as you can tell, by the time you get to that second interview, we talked about being a family. We already know a lot about you. All right? So that's why we have our interviews. We are uh, unique at that. As firefighters from Crew Fire 3, we get involved in who you are. And that's what we want. Can we work with you 24 hours at a time? Okay? Does that make sense? Good. Questions? <coughs> you know, as Captain Beadle said, we take a lot of pride and ownership in our process because we've been at it since we started. You know, all of us that uh, we felt that it was something worth 
hanging on to it and making it better. So just remember, you know, those interviews, you know, think about what you're going into. You're going into a peer interview in the first one where you're talking with basically an engine company or a truck company. And then as you go into your, your final interview, that's where you take your resume and you present yourself and all of your accomplishments and uh, a little more about yourself. So just know what type of an interview you're going into. And like Andy said, especially listen to the questions because yeah, if you go in with preconceived answers, it really doesn't fare well. Um, this is just a brief background on the CPAT if you're not familiar with it. If you go to the Pooter Fire Authority website under employment, there's a blue tab for CPAT. Click on it and it'll run you through the, the test um, or you can just Google it and you will find a plethora of information on the CPAP. Essentially, it's a 10, it's a 10 minute, 20 second test. It's pass or fail. You either get it done or you don't. There's no, uh, some departments give people points on their physical test, like if you get it done in six minutes versus nine minutes, you get more points. We don't do that, it's pass or fail. Um, you do need to be in shape to do it. Um, so go to that, go to the national websites, they will talk about the you know, types of exercises, types of things you need to be doing to get in that shape. There's a lot of gyms, especially if you're in the CrossFit type arena, that they have a lot of firefighters that can train you specifically for that test. Um, don't walk into that test without working out thinking you'll pass it, okay? That'd be a waste of $100, right? Again, Ames is um, the closest local one testing it. If you go to the international, the IFF website, international uh, firefighters, there's a CPAT section, you can click on it, and they have a list of everyone that does these CPAT throughout the country. Every now and then, Pikes Peak down in Colorado Springs, they pop up with the CPAT, so check with them. And every now and then, you can find, um, I think it's South Metro, and Castle Rock will pop up, and they'll do their own CPAT, so you can, you can go in and test it, which is good. Um, make sure it's a certified certificate that you get. Uh, again, the proof, by March 10th, not what your packet says of the Chiefs interview. And that card is good for one year. So like I said, if you make that list, but you're not you know, at the top, and so you're probably gonna be on the list for a year or two, don't let that expire, because you know, then we call you and you're ready and your CPAT's expired. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, kind of look ahead on that again, because you know, if you get notification that you're gonna have an interview and your card's expired, you're gonna be scrambling to find one. You know, Ames is, probably the most consistent place to take a test. I mean, literally, they, they run at least one process, it seems, every month or maybe every two months. Pikes Peak is an outdoor, so they're limited on when they can do it, and Castle Rock usually only does it when they're hiring. So the only consistent local place to have that run would be at Ames. And one of the things you can do is, is Ames separates out their practice sessions from their uh, CPAT test. So when you sign up for the test, you pay $100, and then if you're able to, or you're allowed to take two practice, and, and I think they charge $15 for that. So they've separated out because some people didn't want to take the practice. So they separate it out. Uh, the practice, I highly recommend. I, I can't tell you how we have seen people come into the first practice and they have to be eight weeks before for the test and then four weeks before the test, something like that. But uh, we have seen people come in and just flounder miserably on that first practice. And then through the peer fitness training that, they, that we offer at Ames is uh, people improve and we've actually seen them pass the test eight weeks later. So if you don't know what your ability is, go to one of the practice days, run through it, and they'll, uh, they'll time you, run you through it, they'll tell you where you need to improve or where you can go. Any questions on the This is just a quick list of places we've identified that offer the EMT course. When they offer what they charge, things of that nature, we don't know. Um, but if, you know, the, obviously the closest one for us is front range. But right around testing time, they fill up a lot of people trying to get their EMT in time. So here's various ones we've identified. If you can't get in here, check with these, these folks, see if they got open seats. It's a semester-long course. 
Um, I don't know if it's changed since when I took it, but it was typically three nights a week um, for a good three and a half hours, like six to nine thirty, and a couple Saturdays, and then you have to do some ride alongs with fire departments, ambulance agencies, and some ER clinical time. So it's a it's it's a chunk of time. Plan on that if you don't already have it. As we said before, so that final list will get, be, get um, made and we'll rank you from 55 to about 65-ish. You'll get a, a letter saying congratulations, here's your number. Uh, get a minimum of two years. The chief has the discretion to extend that up to three years if they want, uh, whether it be a budgetary issue, if the list is still, we have really good candidates still on that list, like we've done with the last two lists, we still have great people on that list. It doesn't make sense to start over again when we can still pull from that. Um, you can see that ENT. Uh, chiefs interview, just like it sounds, you'll be across from, uh, in my interview, we had five chiefs, anything from battalion to division to the head chief, and they will, they'll interview you. This, basically, the list they have in front of you, the firefighters on the street and in the stations have given them a list of, these are the top 65 people that, you know, essentially we want to bring it to the family. We think we, you know, we can live with them a third of our lives. And we then turn it over to them, and from there, they make the decision. <coughs> and they don't hire necessarily by rank. So if we're interviewing, say there's, say there's three spots. We're interviewing the top six. We're not going to hire just one, two, and three. We might, they may hire four, five, and six based on that final number. So just where you're ranked doesn't mean we're going to go down that that road. Okay. <coughs> So don't be discouraged that, oh, I'm, I'm sixth out of six, so I look, you know, no wonder thinking you got the job. Okay, because it's fair game at that point still. <coughs> That's basically what we have. Right now we can turn it over to questions. Anything about the process, anything about the department, anything about studying and preparing. Okay, so for those of you that can hear, he asked what shift schedule we work. It's called modified Kelly. Um, the best way to explain it is we have three shifts, an A shift, a B shift, and a C shift. If A shift started their day, started their, their tour, we'll call it, they would work 24 hours on a Monday. They would have all of Tuesday off. They would work a second 24 hours on Wednesday. They would have all of Thursday off. And then they would work the third and final shift of the tour on Friday for 24 hours. Then they get four days off, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Then it starts all over again. Then they go Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, Friday, Sunday, Tuesday. So you know your schedule as long as whatever shift you stay on. I mean, I've been on B shift my whole career, so essentially for nine years I've known my schedule. Um, it only changes really if you change positions, change uh, shifts. People haven't asked me on the recruitment side of things about the 4896 schedule that's getting real popular out there. We as a department explored it. The chief took feedback from the from the whole department, pros, cons, what people thought. And uh, the chief's decision is at this time we're not going to go to the 4896 that a lot of the departments on the permanent are going. Could it change down the road? Possibly. I, I don't know. But um, at this time, if you're interested in 4896, we don't do that here. In the foreseeable future, we're not going to that schedule. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Do you know about like approximately what you're looking at in hiring as far as numbers? I know you guys said, does it all depend on how many people retire? Um, do you have a ballpark in your head? Or you know, our, our last three lists, uh, we have hired 20 or more off of each list. You know, one or two of the lists, I think we went all the way through. You know, the one thing that we find is that People that test for PFA are also testing for other departments and they get hired somewhere else. So a lot of our list gets taken by other departments and, and some of those guys come back, you know, or some of those guys take the job with us even though they're working somewhere else. But we do lose candidates to other departments and, and they choose to stay there. Um, you know, the one thing that we all say is, you know, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. If you have an opportunity to go somewhere, don't turn it down just waiting for for another one to uh, show up I mean take every opportunity you can uh, 
every test is, is great. It helps, especially in the interview side of things. And as you heard me say earlier, our interview process is where we really hire our candidates. I mean, I could give you a number, but I could very well be making things up. I know we have, I believe, 25 people that have 27 or more years of so retirement. Um, I know Station 8 is on the horizon. It's just um, Tim Nith needs to get some more occupancy and some stuff like that, but it, it, it's right there. You know, as soon as we open a new station to make it go career, that's nine individuals right off the bat. Um, we, we would like to expand some of the services, so like I said, more uh, support apparatus truck companies. Every truck company is an additional 12 people. So there's, there's stuff on the horizon. A lot of it is, um, you know, the political world, the financial world of being a city, city department, things of that nature play a role. Um, the one guarantee is that there are going to be people retiring. Yes, sir. Is your fire can through you guys or through your aims or is it a house for your up? No, it's a combination. Of departments, we run the uh, Fort Wayne Fire Consortium, which is uh, what's uh, six now. It's seven of the departments, not only uh, Northern Colorado but uh, Southern Wyoming. So it's a four-month academy for true fire, but it's a three-month regular academy. So and you will have instructors from each one of those departments. So you will not only be with true fire, but you also be with uh, really love in China and learning um, older, so there's a lot of involved. So you get a little bit from everybody. So, um, that's how we've been working for the last few years. Yeah, that started as the Northern Colorado Consortium. It was very successful and Cheyenne and Laramie wanted to uh, be involved with it, so we, we mm -hmm. called it the Front Range Car Consortium. It's a great academy to go through and, and we train at all the training centers that we have. Every every department in there plays a role in, uh, in training our candidates. It's a typical class size, 14 to 24 ish. And one day you may be up for a the next day you're in Loveland. Or, I mean, they, they try to group them so there's not as much traveling. Um, for those of you that may not live here currently and would need to move here if you got hired. I mean, there's not a residency thing, but during the academy, you don't want to be driving as much because you were not tired because, you know, 50, 60 hours a week. Um, we have residents at the training center you can stay at. You go you go to whatever training center is scheduled for that day with your country. Yes, sir. Will this process uh, feed into a hotshot crew or anything like that? No, sir. No. Um, Cooter Fire Authority does have a uh, wildland team that we send all over the country. One, when we can afford to send the resources out when we're not swamped here with, say, like our own high park or things of that nature. Um, to typically send them out as an engine crew. Uh, three people on either a, a type six engine, for those of you that are familiar with wildland. And, um, you, from day one, if, once you're online, if you want to become a part of that group, you can get on that group and you put your name on a sign-up list if you're available or not, and they, you can be deployed up to two weeks at a time. But we are, all our red card certified. Yeah, all of our red card certified. Yes, sir. So, Cooter Fire Authority is strictly BLS, correct? Here I'm being service in the fire. That is correct. We do have some people that have their paramedic. They're not allowed to act as paramedic. Um, we work with Cooter, uh, well, UCH, UCH Health currently. Um, there's some talk to hopefully expand at least what we do. I don't, for those of you interested, I don't foresee us ever taking going into the transport world. And I don't know that we'll necessarily touch the uh, paramedic world. There's the new um, National Advanced EMT, which I think is probably more likely. Yes, sir. Is there, isn't that just. Uh and they can probably speak to the history a little more than I. I know in the late 70s, one gentleman owned the, the ambulance company, the Hearst company, and the tow truck company. He wanted to load money and loaded ambulance. The chief of what was then Fort Collins Fire 
at that time didn't want, didn't want it. So the next logical place would go to PPH. Um, it's, it's been a, a, good, a good system that we have. And um, there's not really been a, a need to. But you know, if we can expand and help our citizens more by expanding the a lot of fire departments that took over transport were actually kind of forced into it because the guy who owned the ambulance company just gave it up. Uh, we're fortunate that we're not in that position. You know, we have PBH, which is a very healthy organization. And, uh, you know, they've only gotten better in the last 20 years. And you know, we also work with Thompson Valley. So we're fortunate to have, you know, that type of capability and we work very well with them and uh, as the first responder you know we uh, we get on and try to stabilize the scene before they get there originally it would cost our taxpayers a lot we would be paying us so we barely pay us for the taxes and we need to charge them since we have the interviews that has grown with us basically we were right from the we grew so I think so they've added a lot more units, a couple of more areas, trained a lot more people, have a lot more people on staff. So they've also grown just like we have. So it wasn't financially possible and benefit. Yes, sir. If you're hired, um, does the cap start in June or does that start later? Be, uh, you will be notified in June or July, and then it'll start here. We start two weeks early, so the first two weeks are just like from eight to six. You'll take care of well, all your paperwork, uh, you get all your clear your stuff out of the way. At the same time, you'll be uh, running and getting in shape for the cat. When's the fall academy? Start? Fall academy starts. Uh, I think it's the end of uh, second to last week of August. Yeah, there's two years, the end of August to probably what, early December? Yeah, it's like early December, yeah. And then end of February-ish to end of probably first week of June. And that's, that, what, and that, those academies have been, whether or not PFA has anyone in there, because the whole consortium is always in that academy. Um, everybody's, somebody's hiring at any given time. Again, yeah, even if we don't have candidates, we're involved in the, Training You'll have a uh, two week period just getting all your paperwork taken care of. And then at the end of the academy, you still have two weeks of uh, getting used to the rest of the stuff that you need to take care of before you come online fire. So that's why with PFA, it's just another month longer than everybody else. Yes, sir. Um, what kind of accommodation do you guys make for individuals that might be like serving in the Guard and Reserve, like army-wise, in the military time because they have? <coughs> you have military leave, so okay. we have no problem. You have to go, you have to go. And if your military leave runs out, uh, we make that available to you. Know, uh, to It's obviously leave without pay, but we don't give your job away. So, you know, we do respect your time that you put in for that. And, uh, you know, we pay your military leave up to a certain level, and I'm not sure how many days that is. But, uh, you know, we, we've got several people that are involved at that level, and uh, I mean, we, we are more than accommodating. You would have to finish the four month academy, though, you'd probably have to get to the academy. You, yeah, you, you'll have to definitely get to get Yeah, I'm not sure how that works <coughs> for, for, the, for, the, uh, for the guard or something. We have had people that are in the guard that have gone through it and they've made those accommodations. So. Okay. Yes, sir. Does the academy go through a weekend? Is it Monday through Friday or a... I don't think there's any. Usually Monday through Friday, but every once in a while there is a Saturday when a special opportunity comes or if there's a holiday, sometimes they have made them uh, do a Saturday. It's like a makeup move to give you the day off, say Christmas, fell on a Wednesday. So you have that off. Yeah. Or just stay late. So then you know, get them. Yes. You need anything else? Good questions. Um, so you've got the PowerPoint. 
we just got, uh, hopefully everybody got a little flyer that just kind of talks about PFA. As far as getting in the mindset of studying and interviews and stuff, crack, start practicing your interviews now. Practice like you're already going to pass that test and you're going to be up for an interview. Have people that know you well interview. Record yourself. You'll start picking up on little ticks and twitches and ums and things of that nature that you want to get eliminated. Um, if you are in towns that offer ride-along programs such as PFA, sign up to a ride-along, come to the station, hang out with the uh, crews, pick their brains. Our ride, you are allowed to ride with us until 5 p.m. on December 31st. At that, yeah, they have to go through our admin. Yeah, go through our admin. The, the instructions are on the website. You can ride with us. You're allowed one ride every six months. Come hang out. Uh, it's typically in the evening. You can have uh, dinner at the station with the crews. Uh, pick their brains. They'll be more than happy to help you with uh, with preparing and questions and stuff about the job. December 31st, we shut off ride-alongs to anyone involved in the process until the process is done. In <coughs> We don't, we don't want to give any more advantage once we're getting into interviews and things of that nature. The only people that can ride with us at that time that may still be in the process are the EMT students because you have to get your clinical hours and our, our uh, we have a volunteer cadre and they can ride because they're already considered to be employees. Okay? You said you're only allowed one ride along every six months? Yes, sir. If you plan on doing it, you better hurry because it's going up fast. Because <laughs> so, right now you're competing with the EMT students. And Probably not because um, contractually Front Range and Longmont has signed, done the uh, waivers of liability and things with that probably with Longmont Fire, AMR, Ambulance probably. So you can talk to them, but I bet Legality-wise, they've already got their liability taken care of down there. But that wouldn't stop you from trying to just do a ride to do a ride along here. Yeah. You know, and as Spencer said, you don't have if you have mornings off, you can ride in the mornings. Yeah, we we both doesn't have to be in the evenings. Just pick a time and they'll set you up. Yeah. Uh, the main person you'll talk to when you call our, our admin line is Susan Ferrari. She's the one that schedules it. Um, you're probably going to hate me for saying this, but your best chance to kind of get out and see work and stuff like that are just stations one, two, three, four, five, six, ten. Six, ten, fourteen, twelve, and seven are our slower stations. One through five are our busier stations. So take that for what it's worth. If you're at a slower station, though, you can sit and talk about the test several hours. You know, take every every part of this test. You know, don't look ahead. I mean, look ahead for your interview and things like that, but don't overlook this written part of it. Uh, you have to to be in the top 300 to get to the next step. Yes, sir. How many people usually take the written? Uh, number of people that took the written, I believe, last time we did this about. 585, 600, the written. We had about just shy of a thousand initially apply. Some didn't meet the application requirements. Some did have, we had a little bit more stringent requirements last time to meet that. Um, some didn't show up. You know, there's a whole list of things. So about 600 is what we're kind of used to for the actual written. Uh, there was another. Well, either you folks or national testing may that written tests are sore available to us at some point in time. Or that yeah, you get you get your results right away from okay. the end. They'll tell you exactly what you're What's your that? Within like three days. Three days. I mean, it's literally instant. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so they'll give you that, and, and we'll get that information as well as any of the personal history questionnaire. Uh, so as you go in and, and fill out anything in the personal history questionnaire, if you go in and change that, uh, employers that you were signed up for actually get notification that things have changed. So, you know, if you change that, okay, I've got my EMT or, you know, I'm, I'm finished at that point, that will show us a change. You know, it will also show that if you said one thing and 
then you change it to another, that will also show. Anytime you show a change or do a change, it will show to uh, whatever department you are signed up. Yeah, so if in one you put a criminal offense and then you try to remove the criminal offense, it'll flag it and it'll let us know. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, if it, if it was an honest mistake, then, you know, you can state that. You have a spot to do that. But it's just a way for departments to be able to track that. Um, don't get afraid of the score that you get back from NTN. I've heard some people um, say, man, I, I, I bombed that one of five sections. I, I'm done. Those sections are on, and, and Dave can correct me if I'm wrong, are kind of on a curve. So if, say, the mechanical aptitude people are getting 60s and 70s, you get a 60 and you're like, holy cow, I just got a D, almost failed. But the majority of people are getting that, the curve is actually good in your favor. Okay? Yeah, so, so the math and English are pass fail at, at a 7% level. And the others, and then everything is cumulative, uh, like he was saying. So, yeah, it doesn't. Doesn't really reflect if you get 70 or 60 on, on one of the other sections. Any others? All right, well, thank you for coming out tonight. Um, again, my, my address and Haley's address are on the website if you have questions, comments, concerns, anything with the written test, first go through NTN, and if it's not getting solved or issue there then come to us don't come to us first um, look forward to seeing some of you out there doing ride-alongs and get ready and start preparing and just pretend that you're going to be at the end there and prepare for that all right have a good night thank you, thank you.